We do have breaking news. Roger Stone, President Trump's longtime associate, was arrested early this morning by FBI agents. He has been indicted on seven charges brought by special counsel Robert Mueller. Let's get reaction from Capitol Hill. Senator Michael Bennett, the Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee, a Democrat, joins us now. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I don't know if you've seen this dramatic video that CNN has obtained of Roger Stone's arrest before sunrise this morning by FBI agents pounding on his door. You are on the Intel Committee. How do you think that this moves the needle on the investigation? Well, obviously, I can't talk about anything on the Intelligence Committee, but I can talk about your footage. And my, my first thought when I saw those FBI guys on the door, on Roger Stone's door, was Thank God we still live in a country that subscribes to the rule of law. We're, we're, we're a country of laws, not a country of men. That's evidence. Uh, the, the, what you showed today is evidence that that's still true. There's so much that I'm frustrated about with the way this government is working right now, but law enforcement is doing its job. And this investigation has resulted in the indictment of over 30 people. I think eight people have pled guilty. It, it is not a witch hunt. It is a professionally run investigation by Robert Mueller, who's respected uh, by uh, law enforcement all over this country. And I think it's incumbent on Democrats and Republicans to make sure this investigation is protected and that he's able to take it to its conclusion wherever it leads. And by the way, many law enforcement, many FBI agents are doing their jobs today without being paid. Maybe those agents that we just saw arresting Roger Stone are not being paid because of the government shutdown. So you had this emotional scolding of the whole idea of the shutdown and the president's border wall yesterday on the Senate floor. So I just want to play a moment of that for everyone. This idea that he was going to build a medieval wall across the southern border of Texas, take it from the farmers and ranchers that were there, and have the Mexicans pay for it, isn't true. Seemed like you had sort of reached a breaking point yesterday. What, what happened? Well, what happened was uh, my colleague from Texas, Senator Cruz, was on the floor uh, uh, claiming that he felt sympathy for the Coast Guard guys that aren't being paid. And by the way, I have huge sympathy for that. I think it's ridiculous that they're not being paid. But what I pointed out was that in 2013, Ted Cruz shut the government down while Colorado was beset by floods. You know, we had people dying. We had people's homes destroyed, communities trying to recover, people trying to do everything they can to rebuild. The best of America. The best of America. And here, we were shut down for politics so he could read Dr. Seuss on the floor of the Senate. So my view is, look, this is absurd that this government is shut down. We should never shut the government down. Uh, but beyond that, we actually should focus on a set of priorities that are important to the people of Colorado and the rest of the country, like whether we're going to furnish a decent education to people, whether we're going to create a system of higher education that people can actually afford, whether we're yeah. going to invest in our infrastructure. When was the last time you guys talked about any of that? Yeah. On CNN. But, well, or, listen, I mean, Senator Cruz's point yesterday was that there was a clean bill that Senator Kennedy had introduced that Democrats didn't support that could have supported the Coast Guard. Yeah, because it was a political trick. It was an excuse for not opening the rest of the government. It was an excuse not to pay those FBI guys or those DOJ guys. Having worked at the Department of Justice myself, I know what amazing civil servants they are. Not to pay the people at Homeland Security, but to claim to the American people that somehow just paying the Coast Guard was adequate or sufficient. It was a political trick, uh, is what it was. And it's, we should open the government up. This is, this, the idea that we are holding hostage the American people's government over a campaign promise that the president simply can't fulfill because it was a lie is ridiculous in the greatest democracy ever known on the planet. Well, and we got to come to our senses here and say we, we, we expect a different standard out of our elected officials yeah. than we're getting. And um, and I think we've all got a job to do as citizens to make sure people are held accountable. Well, I mean, yesterday, as you know, there was an opportunity with these two bills in the Senate, neither of which passed. And so today, are we any closer to ending the shutdown? Look, they didn't pass. They didn't pass. But ironically, the Democratic bill got more votes in the Senate than the, than the Republican bill. And I think that was Mitch McConnell demonstrating to the president that there are not the votes in a Republican Senate. Remember, 
The Republicans have the majority in the Senate, and there are not the votes there to support the president and his wall. And McConnell showed that very clearly yesterday by holding those votes. And so my hope is that somebody at the White House is paying some attention to this. Unfortunately, I'm not sure they're very sympathetic to the catastrophic uh, result of the shutdown for federal workers living all over this country, including in Colorado. But maybe, and I don't think they have a lot of sympathy for them, but maybe they've got the sense now that they are on the losing end of the stick here politically, and they'll allow the government to, to reopen, and then we can begin to do the American people's work again. Senator, one of the president's ideas, in fact, CNN has gotten a draft let proposal of what it would look like is an emergency declaration which would actually seize some private property along the border in an eminent domain clash to build the wall. I mean, it, it's just striking because I remember not long ago when Republicans, particularly conservatives, would have gone ballistic at the idea of a president seizing private property. And you talked about what would happen in Colorado. So yeah. what's going on? But let me say this about this. Republicans in Colorado, I mean, I'm, I don't want to be presumptuous, but my state is a third Republican, a third Democratic, and a third Independent. Republicans in Colorado would go ballistic if any president suggested he was going to seize farmland or ranch land by eminent domain. And, 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 and every elected official in our state would protect our state and our property owners against that kind of activity. I do not, for the life of me, understand how Republican senators in Washington, D.C. could defend it or see it differently. It doesn't make any sense. And it's a great example, actually. It's, a, in fact, a, a perfect example of how the Republican Party nationally has become Donald Trump's party and how the Republican Party nationally is no longer conservative. There is nothing conservative about declaring uh, an, an, uh, an unconstitutional emergency and, and seizing the property of private citizens by eminent domain. That is a radical act by an autocrat. That is something we expect in countries uh, that are, you know, all, all over the world that don't subscribe to the rule of law. The idea that it's being talked about by an American president and being endorsed by uh, members of his party here in Washington, D.C., is a sign of how close we are to the edge. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and when, I, when, when we stand up against that kind of stuff, in my, from my point of view anyway, this is not about standing up for Democrats. It's standing up for everybody in this country who believes in the rule of law yeah. and believes that this democracy uh, uh, has a set of precepts that it needs to function. Senator, very with. quickly, we're out of time, but you seem to have found a passion. Pundits have pointed out you seem to have found your voice with this. I'm just wondering, as we approach 2020, are you considering something bigger than just your Senate seat? Well, I don't know. I said last night, I mean, like everybody in this building, I'm thinking about it. I think we need a, we need a huge change. And I view Donald Trump not as the cause of our problems. I think that he has accelerated a lot of problems, but he is a symptom of, uh, of, of the political breakdown that we've had in this country over the last 10 years. Okay. Much of it, I think, caused by the right wing of the Republican Party. And we have to come together and begin to resolve okay. these differences uh, uh, in order to leave yeah. our children and our grandchildren yeah the country that we were left. Senator Michael Bennett, we appreciate you being on New Day. Thanks, Thanks so for much me. for your perspective. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The